Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. Today we're out here at the range with this awesome huge piece of hardware. This is a German Pac-40, or Panzer Abwehrkanone. It's an anti-tank gun. This was in fact the mainstay of German anti-tank guns during World War II. These were developed between 1939 and 1941 by the Rheinmetall Company, and then produced all the way through the war. Uh, they made about 23,500 of them in total, which is quite a lot for something this size. This particular one is a 1943 gun, and to the best of our knowledge, it's actually the only live-firing Pac-40 in the United States right now. Um, there's an interesting story behind where it came from, which we'll get to in a minute. Now, uh, this is a 75mm gun. It fires a ginormous case that's about, from here, about this tall. Uh, fires a, about a 15-pound projectile at 2,500 feet per second. Uh, they had, so primary use of this was in, as an anti-tank gun. Uh, direct fire, like this, aimed with a uh, little telescopic sight. In fact, we'll zoom in here, you can take a look at that. So, not a whole lot bigger than a rifle scope, right there. Um, and it's got a very simple little German post reticle in it. A little hole in the armor shield, so uh, you can see through it. And you point this straight at a tank, and uh, this thing was powerful enough to blow right through pretty much any Allied tank in World War II. Um, the only things that were able to stand up to it were some of the, the late war Russian heavy tanks. But on the Western Front, this thing would eat Sherman's for breakfast. Um, it was also used, I should say, uh, maximum range of this as a main gun was about a mile. Uh, they, did also use it, they did also use it for indirect fire. So arcing up and over, it had a maximum range of about five miles that way, firing a high explosive. Although really, it's, its purpose and its effective use is as an anti-tank gun. Um, it is surprisingly light for what it is. It weighs about 3,200 pounds. You can see here the armor shield to protect the crew is two pieces of, of rather thin plate that are separated by some standoff bolts. Uh, the idea here was pretty much protection from shrapnel and small arms fire. Something might go through one of these plates, but by the time it got through, it would have slowed down, it would be going sideways and it would not penetrate the second plate. And doing it this way made it easier and cheaper to manufacture. You know, the light plate's a lot easier to, to bend and, and harden, um, and it kept the weight of the gun down. This thing is brutal when it fires. You'll see that in just a minute. Throws up a gigantic cloud of dust that completely consumes the gun. Um, firing this, we actually broke one of the windows uh, in a vehicle right behind the gun. Uh, really an impressive concussion. You'll get a kick out of that. Um, it is German. It is overly complex. A lot of the parts in this were made with fairly light sheet metal, uh, which made it a, kind of a beast to, to rebuild. When this was purchased, it originally came from a VFW hall that had been bought out by a lady who turned it into an art gallery. Uh, she really did not like guns. She decided to paint this bright pink and cover it in flowers as a statement. Um, and it was in pretty bad shape. A lot of the sheet metal was rusted through, rusted away. Um, about a full year of rebuilding went into this gun to, to put it into the fireable condition that it's in today. Um, the lady who did, who did sell this uh, uh, sold it to an intermediary on the strict condition that it would never fire again because it's an evil weapon of war or something. Uh, that intermediary promptly sold it to the folks who own it now who promptly rebuilt it because it is awesome. So we have our windage and our elevation uh, hand wheels here. Pretty basic stuff, just larger than most. This button in the middle of the wheel is actually your, your firing uh, button. You smack that in nice and hard. It goes through a uh, connector here, here, fires the gun. When this fires, the whole barrel and breech assembly comes sliding back on these rails. In actual wartime use, it has an automatic ejector that would throw the empty case out the back of the gun. Um, you have a shield here, partly for that, so that you can get someone standing here and have part of the leg taken off by the recoiling breech assembly. Um, now for, for shooting today, the guys who own this have the, the automatic ejection system disabled so that they can keep the brass in good shape because obviously brass is not easy to come by anymore and it's expensive and they want it, they don't want it thrown across onto rocks and broken. So um, gunner sits over here. You'd have an assistant gunner on this side uh, to load the gun. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? A 
we have like the mother of all muzzle brakes. Um, kind of bears a resemblance to some competition AR brakes you might see, and for the same reason. Quite a significant side blast off of this. The rings, uh, I don't think these are accurate on this particular gun, but the rings originally were painted to reflect tank kills. One thing we noticed, uh, just maneuvering around this gun, is that this armor shield is not very big. This is here more to protect the gun than to protect the crew, because you have to get really small to hide behind this shield when you're back here firing. All right, enough talk. Let's see it shoot. Thanks for... Thanks for tuning in guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I know this is about the most impressive thing I've ever seen actually fire off and uh, we had a ball being out here to watch it. Tune in again to ForgottenWeapons.com for more awesome German artillery.